So in this video I'm going to open up my fender basement to change the electrolytic capacitors. But first I just want to say that if you're not totally familiar with what's inside of a tube amp and how to safely handle it, don't open one up. They can kill you even long after they've been unplugged. Also in this video I did most of the work in the middle of the night in my basement next to the furnace. So I'm trying to keep my voice down at some times and also it sounds like there's a jet engine in the background at other times. So sorry about that, but hopefully you get something out of this video. Also, I'm not trying to claim to be an expert on this. I'm learning as I go and I'm just trying to share my experience so that somebody else like me can benefit a little bit as they come along. All right, here so we go. I got the doghouse off now and I have not drained the filter caps yet. And I'm just kind of curious what they're storing. So let's take a look. 20. 20. 20. 20. So and then these are the ones in series here, but this is still the same polarity as the other ones. 1. This side. Point nine. So here's my electrolytic recap kit. I got this from VintageFenderAmpRepair.com and these are all FNTs which are made in Germany except for that one. I believe that's for the bias filter and uh, that's a Nishikon. Um, but I just want to take a minute and say I had a really great experience with VintageFenderAmpRepair.com um, I found I wound up on that site a bunch of different times after various Google searches and questions because there's just a wealth of information there that's just free for just surf on in and look. They have all the different schematics and layouts and uh, some some good technical write-ups and uh, just really helpful information for free. And then they also have really great service and a good price on these capacitors. I I had emailed asking what the values of the capacitors that they include in the kit are because it didn't exactly say on the website. It just you could just select which amp you had and they would send you a kit. And uh, within a day, I got a reply from Mike. Um, very helpful, very informative reply. He told me that uh, in place of the 20 microfarads, they use 22 microfarads, which is you know identical really. Um, and nobody makes 20s anymore. Uh, the 16 microfarad, they, they are, they're right on at 16. And for the two 70 microfarad caps, nobody really makes 70s anymore, and they typically include 100 microfarad caps. And he explained that if I noticed any difference at all, it would be that uh, it's a little punchier in the bass and the low frequencies don't break up quite so quickly. Well, I thought about that, and I was just kind of curious. I went on the F&T capacitor website, and I noticed that they offered an 80 microfarad 450-volt cap. And so I emailed back and said, hey, do you happen to have these other ones? And so he substituted those for me for no charge. So um, maybe the 100 microfarads would have been better. I don't know, but I just kind of wanted to stick as close to the original specs as I could and so I'm very happy that uh, he let me have these 80 microfarad caps and then they uh, they shipped very quickly really great communication from Mike and just all around a great experience and then they include some good instructions too some good information in here here's a here's a diagram so when somebody rips all these out and then realizes that they don't know exactly what the polarity was Here's a very helpful diagram. And then here's a layout for the amp, and they've highlighted the components that they included, so it's easy to find. So just a really great kit from VintageFenderAmpRepair.com. Okay, so that should be pretty easy. All the leads just stop right there. I was reading and on some of the amps the leads go through and then go to other connections underneath between the boards but not this one. They just all stop right here at these joints. So that should be pretty pretty easy to desolder and resolder. I'm just going to place this pencil under here to kind of lift that up for me. 
So before I desolder anything, I'm just going to compare real quick that it looks like this diagram. So here we've got 16 microfarads and positive on that side, 20 microfarads, positive on that side, 20, positive, 20, positive, 70, positive, 70, positive. Yeah, that's good. So as long as I put them back like this picture, I should be okay. So a nice bonus is that VintageFenderAmpRepair.com included these five resistors that uh, were not listed, but it's kind of a nice, uh, nice little surprise that they showed up. I'm imagining that they're these five resistors, so I'll see if I can match them up. All right, looks like the color codes are not the same. So what I'm going to do is just lift one end of the resistor and ohm it out. Alright, my meter's reading those ones is infinite. Might not be a real good meter for this. Yeah, this probably isn't the best meter for... So that's where this comes in. So we got 1K 1 watt, 4.7K 1 watt, 27K 1 watt. So we ought to be able to find those. Alright, on the schematic you can see here that the uh, the two 70 microfarad caps both have a 220k 1 watt resistor so that's going to be what these are these are both going to be 220s so i just googled resistor color codes and the very first google return was a pretty cool site that uh, had a calculator where you just use drop down menus to uh, enter in the colors of the bands on the resistor and it tells you what the uh, resistance and the tolerance and everything that those bands tell you. So that's a very cool tool and uh, so I don't mix them back up. What I did is I just punched them through the paper right where they go so I can put them in one at a time and be confident that I'm grabbing the right one. So I'm just trying to find something to stick in here to hold these wires off of this lead because I don't because everything along here is positive except for this lead is negative because these two capacitors are in series. So if I if I damage this insulation right where it lays across this lead, then that's obviously bad. This one goes this way. All 
All right, next are the three 22 microfarad. Twenty-two microfarads, positive that way. So you can see I'm not going totally taut on this lead, I'm just trying to take most of the excess away, but there's still, it still kind of makes some little bends and stuff, so there's no tension on the capacitor. Now the third 22 microfarad. Okay, finally we've got 16 microfarads and with the positive facing down again. Now I'm going to have to move my little prop here. Stick it through a little further because I want the body of the capacitor to line up with these ones because I'm going to put some foam back in that doghouse like it had originally. And I'm going to go back through and reflow all these joints because I know I'm, I'm kind of working around the leads and stuff. So once everything's in place, I'm going to go ahead and reflow them, heat them back up, maybe add some solder to a couple of them, make sure everything's got a nice shiny joint. Alright, so here you can see the back side where all the leads stuck through from the components I just soldered in. Definitely want to reflow this joint after I was bending on it. So one thing that's been kind of bothering me a little bit is this this lead on this capacitor with these wires laying right over the top of it. I was having a really hard time when I soldered that of keeping the wires off of it and I'm kind of worried that when I got this lead hot to solder it, I might have, I don't think so, but it, you know, it's possible that I could have damaged the insulation on one of these wires. And everything along here is positive, except for this capacitor, this leg is negative. So if, that, that would really tend to arc right there between these, you know, higher voltage positive wires and this negative lead right here. And also, I want to come through and reflow all these joints but I'm thinking, you know, how the heck am I going to get in here with these wires? So in hindsight, what I should have just done the first time is lift these wires out of the eyelets. Just get them out of the way. 
and that's what I'm going to do now. It's pretty obvious which ones goes where because of the differences in their length. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop them out of there. extra hand but I want to keep that capacitor from lifting up off the board I'm just going to set that roll of solder on there to hold it down and now it gives me free hand to add a little more solder to that joint Same thing on this one. Get that lead down in there a little nicer. So now that those leads are sticking through a little further again, I'm going to go ahead and trim them again. And also now, this gives me an opportunity to just go ahead and put some heat shrink on these. You know, I don't know if I damaged them or not. I don't. It doesn't look like it. But uh, since that is, there is a lot of voltage voltage potential difference right there. Might as well just throw this on there just for good measure. So then I never have to think about it again. Give a nice double layer right where it goes across that capacitor. Alright, so now I never have to think about that again. There's no way that that'll be a problem now. You know, I'm also going to do the same thing right here. I'm just going to put a little piece of heat shrink on there because that's opposite polarity running across there just in case I heated it up or if it ever chafes through, you know, this sits on top of a big 215 cabinet. Probably gets a lot of vibration. I just feel better if there's an extra layer of insulation on that wire. So you notice this is the bottom side of the chassis and these capacitors are just going to be hanging by their leads and you know probably going to be vibrating a good bit. Um, the original doghouse here had a, a piece of uh, some kind of foam or actually like a sponge in it that uh, you know provided support for the capacitors you know to keep them pressed against the board to where they weren't putting tension on their leads, but uh, you know these new capacitors are quite a bit smaller than the old ones and doesn't look like there's much spring left in that foam. So I think what I'm going to do is go get a good piece of weather stripping or something to put inside that doghouse to, uh, to press against these caps and, and just keep them firm against the board to where they're not constantly pulling on their leads. Alright, so I just picked this stuff up at Home Depot. It's this MD sponge window seal. Comes in a roll like that. And uh, I've got two two layers over the small caps and one layer over the bigger caps. And uh, you can see the um, it's just thick enough to where the doghouse doesn't want to go down, but it's it's relatively easy to compress. So it ought to just give you know just kind of a nice little hug to the capacitors just keep them in place and keep keep the tension off of the leads a 
One other thing I wanted to mention is that uh, that sponge window seal that I used, and that's rated for uh, 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm not sure how hot these co filter capacitors are supposed to get, but the caps themselves are rated for 85 degrees Celsius, which is 185 degrees Fahrenheit. So at least I know the, the uh, material that I added can handle more heat than the capacitors themselves can. So I'm not worried about them, uh, about adding a fire hazard to the amp. Okay, so now I'm back to the top side of the amp. I've got the tubes removed so that I can move it around on the bench without hurting anything. And I'm gonna be replacing six components up here. These white Mallory capacitors and this one here for the bias. Now, an interesting thing about this bias electrolytic cap is that uh, the positive end goes to ground and the negative end goes to the bias circuit because the bias is actually a negative voltage so for it to work correctly ground is actually a more positive voltage than the bias circuit is so it goes positive to ground and the positive lead here actually goes through the board all the way to this lug where it's soldered now the new cap that I have that came with my kit, I grab it here, you can see its lead is not going to be long enough to do that. So what I'm going to do is leave this portion down here and then I'm going to solder the new lead to that eyelet and so it'll use the old lead as a jumper to ground and so the new lead will just solder right to this eyelet. On this side, it doesn't have to go very long, so I'll just desolder it out of there and solder the new one in. I think I stated previously that these uh, these smaller capacitors were also FNTs. Looks like they're actually Sprigs. All right. So in all of these positions, the positive faces this direction. It's a pretty full eyelet there. supposed to be going in not coming out well this is definitely a learning experience this eyelet right here it's got just a million things going into it and it's hard to get the leads through 
and uh, every time I get one lead to go in it seems like two others pop out and then to top it all off I just resoldered it and forgot that I still had to put another capacitor in so now it's full of solder again oh thank you god So there's six leads going into that little eyelet and it seems like every time I got one in another one popped out and they're all cut just long enough to get through because I'm sure they were all soldered through and then cut you know 50 years ago so it was hard to get everything back in but I think I did it All right, so this time I'm going to cut the leads first and just try to poke them through a little over an eighth inch or so. Get that propped up. Watch the polarity. All right. 
got those capacitors all replaced. Man, this spot right here, that eyelet, and this one, those were tough. There's a lot of component leads going through there. This is the first time I've uh, worked with an eyelet board, and uh, there's got to be some techniques that I need to learn or something, because I had a heck of a time getting those leads through those eyelets. But I did. I got them all. So, so yeah. Hopefully it works. So I want to make sure that I'm not leaving any little bits of junk, any little bits of solder or of component lead or anything like that in the app that can rattle around and uh, and short something. So I'm just going to blow it out with this uh, duster can here and kind of lift the circuit board up and blow between the boards. Everything kind of collected over in this corner now. I can just shake it up. Let's see if the amp still works.